Entrepreneurs often get the inspiration for their products from the most unexpected of places. None more so than Jonathan Newman, who has looked to the stars in search of his space age offering. My product is utilizing the same technology that NASA uses. But it's something that the everyday consumer can have in their bag. He's hoping the den will be his launch pad and it's countdown to liftoff. My name is Jonathan Newman and I'm here looking for 75,000 pounds for seven and a half percent of my company, Giving Tree Ventures. We make a range of uber healthy, freeze dried fruit and vacuum fried vegetable crisps using the same technology that NASA uses to prepare food for astronauts. This innovative process works by removing the moisture from the product but leaving the nutritional content completely intact. Freeze drying is a multi-million dollar category in the States and it's making its way to the UK. We're currently stocked in Whole Foods, Planet Organic, Ocado, Holland and Barrett, over 200 spa petrol stations across the UK. And we also export to 13 countries. In our first year of trading, we turned over 230,000 uh, pounds. And my aim going forward, uh, with your help, um, is to conquer the UK major multiple supermarkets where scale and volume can really be achieved. So thank you very much for listening and I'd be delighted to bring you some, uh, some samples to taste. I get the whole tray? No, no, just oh. grab one, just oh, grab, just one, grab one, one bowl. Offering dehydrated fruit and veg inspired by astronauts, Jonathan Newman's looking for 75,000 pounds for seven and a half percent of his company. What is that? That's mango. The dragons are certainly making short work of testing the product. Now Deborah Meadens, keen to begin a discovery mission into the cosmic crisps. I love these. Thank you. So, to be clear, because there's dry product around, do you claim this is healthier? Yes. OK, and that's because of the process? Absolutely, yeah. All that's being removed is the moisture. And because there's no moisture, bacteria can't grow. Um, so you get up to 18 months shelf life and you get no nutritional loss. So does this use no chemical at all? None whatsoever. What I would say is where we excel is in taste and quality. We're the only ones experimenting with, you know, superfood vegetables like broccoli and pumpkin. Jonathan, it tastes really good. Thank you. But part of me is thinking it tastes so good is because if you look at this packet, it's 40% fat content. Well, the, the only added ingredient in the broccoli and the pumpkin is 2% rice bran oil. But you're marketing this as a health snack. But a 40% fat, to me, that doesn't seem healthy at all. Well, I mean, look, you know, fats appear in, in, in food naturally, and there's obviously good fats as well. And traditionally, crisps are fried in some not very nice oils in very high temperatures. So what you're getting here is something which is not oily, done at a low temperature. I which... think it is oily. I mean, if you look at the broccoli, uh, when you pick it up, your, your hands, your fingers get quite oily. I noticed the product is made in Thailand at yeah. the moment. And why is that? Freeze drying, it's, it's a prohibitively expensive um, process to make. I looked at uh, a lot of co-packers in Europe. The cost of goods was way too high. What's the love of Thailand? The reason is, is because I was there during the tsunami. Literally, I missed it by one boat. You know, the boat behind me capsized. Um, Seriously? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's another story. But while I was there, I fell in love with coconut water. So I launched a company making raw, organic coconut water. What happened to that company? I still run that company. However, I am uh, in having a conversation about a potential majority shareholding of that company with uh, strategic partners. And how much do you think you'll exit for? I would like to think I'll get about 6.5 million. And you own how much of that? 66%. So you'll get at least ne nearly four million pounds. And what will you do with that four million? Go back to Thailand and <laughs> sit on the beach? No, no, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur and, you know, my heart is in, uh, in, in product and creating. Would you take investment in that business? Um, As a whole? If, if the investment and the valuation were agreed upon, it might be something I'd think about. Food for thought 
for the serial entrepreneur in the form of an alternative deal proposal. But Tuka Suleiman wants to know if the brand is forecast to be the gift that keeps on giving. If you had the project going forward, you've done 230,000 yes. the first year? First year. So year two? Roughly it's the same, 230 with a break even. Right. You know, currently my, my gross margin at the end of the year is about 27%, and I'm breaking even. So it is expensive to make, and I'm, I'm finding ways of getting my cost of goods down. I look at the product, great. Thank you. Then when the numbers come up, it's like it should be a five million pound business. It should be. Yeah. And it will and, be. I'm like, uh, yeah. hello, hello. <laughs> you know, it's, it's um, is it because you're too expensive? Is it because you can't open the doors? I have relationships with drink buyers, but I don't have relationships with snack buyers. Right. You know, it, it's basically like starting from scratch. A blow for Jonathan, as he's forced to admit that costly crisps and a lack of contacts are barriers to big profits. Is the product's most enthusiastic consumer, Deborah Meaden, prepared to put her money where her mouth is? Not only have I virtually <laughs> finished my bowl, but I've also had all of the strawberries yeah. and mangoes. I think they're lovely. Thank you. You're great, the branding's great, but there's a lot of moving parts that I feel are about to move against you. You've got to get better margins. If you don't get better margins, it doesn't matter who I introduce yeah. you to. They're not going to buy your product. Yeah, agreed. So I'm really sorry. I would love to have made it work. Thank you. But I, I'm afraid I'm not over the line. OK. So I'm out. Thank you. Deborah Meaden's a fan of the crisps, but deems their margins less than tasty. Can Tuka Suleiman be tempted by the snack business? You've got a great product. You're great. But as a business, it's not going to make money. And it breaks my heart to say, I'm not going to invest, because I think I'll never get my money back. And I'm out. OK, thank you. Jonathan, I think it's a little bit messy. Um, your margins are under pressure. It's going to be difficult to raise the prices. And you've got this manufacturer who seems to be the only person in the world right now who can make it to the specifications you want. However, I think I can add a lot of value to this. I can get you access to all the stores and help you with building the brand. But obviously that's going to come at a cost. So it's a bit of a punt for me. But I'm willing to offer you all of the money for 35%. The product's really good, it tastes great, but whilst I think on the surface it looks fantastic, I think as a business opportunity it's not going to produce a return that I would need. And the second thing is you are currently about to go through six months of a transaction which I truly believe will defocus you even though you don't think it will. And that won't be good for me, so I, I'm sadly going to say I'm out. Okay. Thank you. Jonathan. Yes. You are highly investable as an individual. Thank you. And I would really like working with you. Um, what would I offer? Well, the business I owned up until last year was in all the major retailers, or many of them, and had relationships with the others in the UK and in Western Europe. And I sit here ready to invest in the next right thing and give it a lot of focus and energy and attention as well, which I think is important. So where does that leave me? I think on balance you've got an offer from a dragon who can use your product as a tangential product to where he is already. So I think I'm going to say I'm out. I am absolutely willing to negotiate with you, um, but you know we're very far apart my 7.5% to 35%. So I'm happy to throw that back to you and see if... So you're asking if I'm flexible? Yeah. Look, if this was your one product that you've got, if you had no other distractions, I would negotiate. And I definitely wouldn't have even come in at 35%. But it's a big risk. 
and you can see why the other dragons have dropped out. It's a fair offer, and sadly, I, I cannot move. I'd be willing to offer you 15%, and what I will do is pay back the 75,000 you put in, in two years' time, and that gets reduced to 10%. What I'd be willing to do is, is I'd want the 35% from the beginning, and if you return the money, I'll drop to 27.5%. I think we need to bring the figure down a bit, Tej. <laughs> um, that's the best I can do. It's, it's you know, my, my ceiling was, was lower than that. Well, um, well, I'm sorry, but um, I'm out. Thanks. Well done, Jonathan, but I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. No magic money tree for the dehydrated fruit and veg. Jonathan leaves the den without a deal. Given the risks and what was at stake, I think that was a fair offer. Yeah, I mean, it's a, he's a great guy, great product. It was just, uh, it was too risky. I really genuinely think we could have, uh, you know, we could have met somewhere a bit closer in the middle. When I say middle, I mean closer to me.